Hi guys, and welcome back to the Super Data Science Series on Seaborn. As a quick recap, in the last video, we used a joint plot to build a kernel density estimate with some random values. As we can see here, we also solved a homework challenge, which was to clarify the data on the bottom of the graph so that you could visualize it better. As we can see here, and we pass in the solution. And in this one, we are going to focus on building a heat map with Seaborn. If we scroll over to the Seaborn documentation, we can see the heat map is basically plotting rectangular data as a color encoded matrix. And if we scroll down, we can one, see the parameters used with the heat map here. And we can also see some examples of heat maps using Seaborn below. So you could scroll through that, become a little more familiar with the abilities of the heat map. And you can see it's a very powerful representation of the numerical data, especially when you're dealing with categories such as these. But let's get started setting up our heat map. And for the purpose of this series, we don't have to go out and grab any additional data sets per se, because if we go to Seaborn, Seaborn actually comes with some data sets pre-built in. We're going to be focusing on the flights.csv. You can also see the other data sets that Seaborn has here. But let's jump back into our Jupyter Notebook and get started setting everything up. When we get started setting everything up, I want you to think about what are some of the first operations that we're going to use. We are working from a pre-existing notebook, but you can think of it in the sense of starting from scratch. You know, one of the first operations, what would you do? So let's get started with that. Navigate to our Jupyter Notebook. And we can get started here. What is the first thing we're going to do here? Well, if we're starting from a new notebook, I mean, we are working in our same Jupyter Notebook, but just to be organized, if you don't run all the previous cells, you can use your import statements, import Seaborn as SNS. Again, I know I've mentioned it in a previous tutorial, but it's always beneficial to have all your import statements up at the top. But since we're starting here and we're really focusing on this example, we do import Seaborn as SNS. And don't forget, sometimes in the Jupyter Notebook, if you run a visualization and it doesn't display, it's because Seaborn is built on top of matplotlib. And we will need the following. We can scroll up. We have the inline command. So our visualizations will display in the cells of the Jupyter Notebook. I just want to paste that there. And we can also, I don't think we're going to actually use NumPy in this example. Import NumPy as NP. But just in case, we'll have it there. So we have our import statements. Again, we're working with the flight data just because I really want to focus on what is going on within Seaborn compared to the actual data. I want to mainly concentrate on that so we can become more familiar with the actual operations of Seaborn rather than the data set that we're using. So we're using the pre-built flight data from Seaborn. We're going to on example four, and we'll do a little combination of actually building this in, and then I will go ahead and paste some in as well, and we can analyze what's going on behind the scenes of Seaborn. But to get set up, we have to actually pass in our data set. So we're going to load the data set, sns.load data set, and it's called flights. We also want to set the following, for example, four equals, one second, as I take that out, example four. We'll go over this in a moment to take a look at what's going on. But quickly, we also want to specify our month, year, and passengers, data that we're going to be using from the data set. And we need to set another display name for our visualization. This is going to actually be what's producing the visualization equals sns.heatmap and to pass in the name or available that we created, our example four. But let's scroll back really quickly. Let's go into the flights.csv. And we have our columns that we're working with, our year, our month, and our passengers. So we can see this is what we essentially did is setting it to our month, our year, our passengers from our flight data set. We're using a heat map. Again, this is a basic heat map just built off on this data, but it shows you that Seaborn is quickly and rapidly able to prototype these heat maps and we can run it. So let's take a look. And we have our data set. We have the months in the following format here. We have our year spread out and also the intensity. We can see that the dark 
is set for the lower values, and the higher value intensity is set for the lighter color. But what can we do to improve this, or what can we do to make this different? We can, using Seaborn's examples that they've provided in their documentation, take a look at the following method. We can pass in some of the built-in parameters for Seaborn's heat map. Using the ANA equals true to write the data value in each cell, and also giving it a string formatting code for integers will allow us to display numerical data in each of the squares. So let's take a look at how would we do that, and we could break it down into smaller pieces. We have our name of our graph, of our visualization, as in display four set from above. We call it again with sns.heatmap, and we want, since it's already established of our example, we want to set the parameters. We can do example four. We again are setting this to true, because it's assigning data to each and we need to specify the format of the string. This will be integer format. And we could run it. And we could see here, each of the values has been assigned to the squares. Now, if you look at these two, which one would you rather work with? Depending on the setup, on the visualizations and the notebook that you're building, but each of them, one is more descriptive. If you have the values built in, it may and relays further information than just the color difference. If you can actually visualize the numerical data and the values, it's more beneficial. This is just one step that you can make a difference between your heat map visualizations. Now, what else can we do? We can, looking at this, see that the colors might be a little intense or might be making it a little challenging to visualize. I mean, if we're looking at the lighter to dark in contrast, the lighter being a higher of a value, you can see it pretty easily, but what if we use a different color scale? We can set our display for, again, the name of our visualization. You're using the SNS heat map that we've already built that we called example four. And the color parameter in the Seaborn can be changed by using CMAP equals and pass in the color that you would like to use. Here, let's try a combination of blue and purple for the purpose of this and see how it relays the information and if it helps clarify the data. So this is actually called blue purple and we can run it and here we see the difference. It's actually using the darker contrast to signify the higher level values here starting from the lighter. In my opinion I think it makes it a little more clear here since we're working from a lighter value to a darker focused on the in more intensity. Again it's just my opinion. And the great thing about this, as we scroll up here, we can use the SNS load data set. If you want to experiment with other data sets, the pre-built ones in Seaborn, you can simply call them instead of using pandas to pass in a data frame or NumPy to create other numerical data columns. You can use the load data set from Seaborn to pass in the pre-built data sets to experiment. Since we are working with Seaborn's arguments or Seaborn's parameters, we can also do the following display set to four, it should be becoming a little more familiar, equals sns.heatmap, example four, again, we're using what we built, and we could set width of our lines, let's try at 0.7. Let's take a look and see what it does, and you can see it breaks apart, it adds lines between these, it may help it look a little more clear, let's try 0.10, okay, Let's try point one. And I like the use of 0 0.6, do 0 0.7, or we can jump it up big time to two. You can see the differences when you're passing the values. In addition, we can also remove this. Same setup, display four equals nsns.heatmap example four. Now try and think of what argument we would pass to use to remove this. If we go to Seaborn and we have been working with the parameters, these may look familiar to you. We have our parameters. We've used CMAP, we've used uh, FMT, we used ANA. You know, these are the way you can pass in the arguments, the predefined parameters built for using the Seaborn heat map. And what can we use here? Try and think to remove the value bar. 
and this might be helpful. We can see right here, the C bar has the option of whether to draw a color bar. Now you can use true or false to set it. So let's pass that in. Let's also take a moment to thank Seaborn for the documentation. We are working through the heat map example using the pre-built and predefined arguments and exploring it further. But Seaborn just does a great job along with providing the documentation with some examples as well. Let's jump back into our Jupyter Notebook, and we can use the C bar equal to, space it out just so you can see it a little bit, false, and let's run it. And there you have it, the removal of the temperature bar. On that note, I think it's a great time to wrap it up for this video. Maybe get some coffee, stretch the legs, and we'll jump back into it in the next video. We're gonna bring in our own data in the next video, and we're gonna use Seaborn to expand on it, extract some information, and continue building our visualizations while we learn the methods and the parameters of Seaborn and the operations. So great job working through this so far. I hope you are learning and taking a lot of information away from this. As always, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you will get up-to-date and weekly information. It's just a tremendous tool to stay relevant in the industry. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please share them, and I'll see you in the next video.